Hey everyone, welcome to the Literary Lounge. I'm Paige. And I'm Emily. And today we are reading The Measure by Nikki Ehrlich. And our drink for today is the short stringer martini. Mm-hmm. It's if you want the, kick. Yeah. If you want the um, recipe for that, you can go head over to our Instagram. The recipe will be there. For our question of the week, it is, what is your favorite pontoon drink? <laughs> Keyword pontoon. Yeah. Most um, Minnesotan thing ever. I honestly like, uh, uh, well, I'm going to give you two things. One, rosé. Chilled really? rosé. Yeah, because, I mean, I just like wine in general. So you can't really do, in my opinion, like a red on a hot day. It just doesn't work well. I don't even picture wine as like a pontoon drink really? anyway. Yeah. We just drink so much wine at yeah, you our do. cabin. My family's just big wine drinkers. So yeah. I, I like like a chilled rosé or for like a cocktail, honestly, like a marg. Okay. I mean, I really like the um, Trace Agave's margarita mix. Have oh, you ever- so good. Oh, you've had it before Yeah, with you're me. the one who introduced me to it. Yeah, and that's like just so good on its own. Like, I mean, I always mix it with like tequila and I'll throw a lime in there, but you really don't have to like do anything else with it. Mm-hmm. So that's always like a go-to yeah. for us. So, nice. Yeah. What about you? When you're when you're not pregnant, what is your pontoon yeah. drink? Um, when I'm not pregnant, uh, I would say either like a black cherry white claw or I can't think of the name right now. Do you know like the brand that has like the pre-made margaritas that I usually always have here? Mm. It's, um, let me see. I don't remember. It's not like Jose Cuervo? No, it's like in cans. Oh. I don't remember. Gosh, what is it called? Uh, oh, Cayman Jacks. Oh, the yeah, Cayman, yeah, The Cayman okay. Jack margaritas, those are literally my favorite. Like, I love those. And I always have those on the pontoon. But otherwise, I either have those or I'll have, like, White Claw, Black Cherries. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Or, like, oh, or Drekkers. Those are my favorite beers. Um, it's a, it's a brewery, I think, in Fargo, North Dakota. Okay. I think it's Fargo. And their beers are... They're okay. One, they're impossible to get, but they're so amazing. Like they literally taste like a smoothie. Like they have like the really? funnest flavors. Like they all have, like key lime pie, and it like doesn't even taste like beer. It's, it just tastes like key lime pie. Yes, it's so good. Oh my god! You know, I just started craving State Fair. I oh my god! When you I were talking about like talking about that flavored with beer, I was like thinking about when the four of us went to the State Fair last year uh, and how we just like ate yeah. and drank all things. It was wonderful. I think the Minnesota State Fair is like supposed to be like the best in the u.s right we have the most things on a stick yeah <laughs> true so <laughs> there's that i'm 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 excited to go to like eat all like the yummy food but i'm yeah. really sad i won't be able to try the beers there's gotta be like an na like there there's gotta be maybe i'm gonna have to get like na cocktails there yeah but yeah the beers are so fun to try at the state fair they have like the best flavors like chocolate chip cookie or like they have like the mini donut beer that has like the cinnamon sugar rim. I don't think we did that one last time. Did we? I usually get it every year, so I don't know. I like that one we got. Um, it was like one of the first ones. Tequila was, Sunrise? It was like a sangria beer, wasn't it? Oh, yes. That was so good. That was like the shells. That was the best beer one. sand. Yeah. Yeah. That and like the pickles that have like the cream cheese and sandwiched in the middle and then they're fried on the outside. Yes. That is like my jam. That, that stand things. is like on the way to the they're right, stand. Yeah, they're right yeah. by each other. So like stop A, stop B. Okay, I'm good. Like, yeah. I highly suggest you go to the state fair, the Minnesota state fair some year. If you're like out of state, like make a special trip. It's literally yeah, so fun. Like fly in, please. Yes. It's a blast. And like, all the food is so good. The yeah. beer is great. <laughs> Oh my gosh, so fun. Yeah. All anyway, a right. yeah. <laughs> couple months till that happens. Yeah, but... we should go again together this year. Oh yeah, we should. Yeah. I can't I'll have wait. to live vicariously through you as you're drinking. I'll just drink all this. I'll drink enough for the both of us like I've already <laughs> been doing the last couple months. So Nice. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, let's get into it. <laughs> So, 
Michelle for The Measure by Nikki Ehrlich. I think we can spend a little bit of time maybe talking about the different characters and the premise of the book, but the one thing I liked most about this book is just how thought-provoking it is. So if you agree, I think we could probably spend like majority of today's episode just kind of talking about all of that. I think that's probably for the best. <laughs> yeah. I um, DNF'd this book. Yeah, which I don't know how you dnf this book. I mean, I it know. wasn't like the most amazing book that I've ever read, but I don't know. I just, I'm like shocked that you did. Honestly, I thought you would like it. So like the premise of it, I think is great, but the execution of it, not great. Like okay. I was just bored the whole time yeah. reading it. And like I had to keep rereading what I was reading. And like it literally took me hours to get to page like 80. <laughs> and that's where you stopped. Yeah. And usually I can like, I could have read that book like in a day. Oh yeah. It's like pretty quick. Yeah. But I just, yeah, I couldn't do it. I don't know why I feel bad. Like I wanted to like it. Like, yeah, I think the concept is so cool, but mm -hmm. like, it's just the execution just was a miss for me. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. It's your opinion. I mean, everybody feels differently about different books and just wasn't for you, mm -hmm. but I think there's enough there that we can definitely talk about, you know, just like the overarching conversation, but yeah. Um, just, I guess, to do like a little premise of summary of the book, um, if you're listening to this, in case you haven't figured it out already, we're going to spoil this book. But um, just, I guess, to talk about the beginning, all these, there's many different characters in this story that are having different experiences with, with what's happening around the world. And what's going on is that everybody that's an adult, what is it, like the age of 21 or 22, I think it's 22 and up. Okay. They receive a box like just one day. Everybody opens their front doorstep. They've got this box and it says like the measure of your life is within. Um, And so like everybody's really confused at first. Like what is going on? Like what is this? Like where do these boxes come from? They open their boxes and they're finding like a piece of string and everybody's is like kind of varying in length Um, and they're kind of trying to like figure out what it means starts to come out that like it's like the length of your lifespan is essentially what they find out and as the book goes on like they find out more and more about like you can get pretty accurate with it just based on like the lengths of the strings and people passing throughout the years like they're able to determine pretty much like down to the day when you're going to die that's crazy yeah and so like the characters in the book all kind of have like differing situations where there's like Nina and Mara they're a couple Nina has a long string she knows she's gonna live like a long life into her older years and then Mara has like 10-ish years to live which she really like struggles with like knowing that she's not going to have this long life with like her girlfriend um there's Ben so he is in Mara's like therapy group so they're both like, they have like a lifespan that's like around the same length, 10-ish years. And his girlfriend like broke up with him because she like peeked at his box with like out his permission. That's and, so sad. Yeah. And then is like, peace, like you're not going to live as long as me. Like, I don't think we mentioned either. Like there's like the, sh it's the short stringers and the long stringers. And like yeah. the therapy group that we're talking about is like for the short stringers. Yeah. They're like a... They're like short stringers, but they're not like super short stringers. I don't know if that's like what the other group is called, but there's like a therapy group for like people that are literally going to die like within the year, or like in a few years. Like there's just like different groups for different like situations, mm -hmm. which is really sad. Yeah. Um, For those, I mean, you think that 10 years is bad, but then there's like even people that have even worse situations where they're like, holy crap, like my life is almost over. Mm-hmm. Um, which has got to be really hard to cope with. Yeah. Um, so then Ben and Amy, so Amy is like the little sister to Nina. Um, they start like writing letters to each other because Amy is the teacher. It's her classroom where Ben and Mara's like group is meeting. And they just like kind of start exchanging these like anonymous letters because I think Ben like writes, they have some therapy session where they have to write something about like, what's going on with them or whatever. And he accidentally like leaves it there. And then Amy finds it and like decides to respond. So they start like communicating with one another that way, which I thought was really sweet. Um, and Amy's kind of like an anomaly where she like refuses to look in her box. 
And she's just like, I don't want to live with this knowledge, Mm -hmm. Um, which is interesting. So anyway, those are kind of, I guess, the characters that I found the most interesting. I don't know about you, but then there's like a few others. Yeah, I thought Nina and Moro were like the most interesting from what I've read. Like I said, I only read to like page 80. Yeah. But like this book, it's like very political. So like just like everything that happens, like it's not just like following like just the characters like it shows like the background of like what's going on like yeah politically mm-hmm. with it which as you can imagine would get like very very messy there's right. like an outbreak of like people freaking out yeah over it understandably right yep and like then shootings like mass shootings yeah people are really upset about suicide attempts yeah their scenarios and like how the government is handling things um like, some of the other characters, Jack and Javier, they're, like, best friends. They're both, like, in the military. Javi has, like, a short string. Jack has, like, a longer one. Um, Jack's uncle is, like, one of the politicians running for president, and he's competing against another man um, where, like, Jack's uncle is, like, demanding that politicians have to, like, expose, like, how long their strings are. So there's, like, that whole piece going on. The military is requiring people to, like, expose, like, the length of their strings. And didn't you say something with the military, like, how they're, like, thinking about either, like, recruiting short stringers or long stringers? Or, like, they're, like, deciding? I thought we talked about that one time. Yeah. So they, like, if, if you have a long string, you go into the army. You can, like, be in combat and stuff. Okay. If you're a short stringer and you're, like, going to die, then they don't, like, let you. And so well, the story with, like, Jack and Javi is they switch string lengths because Jack doesn't really have the desire to, like, go into the field and, like... Wait, you, how can they switch length? How? Like... They just swap strings. But that doesn't work that way, though, right? Well, their lifespan doesn't change, but yeah. what they tell oh, people, okay, they're okay, lying. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, like, they swap strings because, like, Javier really wants to, like, you know, go out and, like, fight for his country. And Jack is more like, I this isn't really, like, what I want. It's, like, kind of what my family wants of me. And so they, like, switch strings. That's so crazy to me because, like, I get, like, why the army would want to have long strings because if they send, like, a bunch of short strings in, mm-hmm. then that means, like they could die in combat much faster and they could lose, like, the war or whatever they're, like, fighting for. Yeah. It's so crazy. Yeah. But then, like, it's, like, guaranteed. It's, like, if you think about it, like, it's, like, a guarantee. If you put long strings in there, it's, like, a guaranteed, like, win because they can't die. Yeah. Which is, like, so weird. <laughs> also, too, how people go just, like, absolutely nuts in this book where they get really daring with their lives because they're, like, I'm going to jump off a building because I can't die or whatever. Like, all these people do, like, this crazy, like, things. But it doesn't necessarily mean you can't get hurt. Yeah, like, you, you can't paralyze, paralyze yourself. Like, yeah. you, that could still happen. Then you just kind of live your life, you know, like, paralyzed or as a vegetable. Like, that That doesn't guarantee anything for you. The quality of life, you don't know. Yeah, one of the stories that I was able to read... um, it was, like, a married cu- a couple that just got married, and, like, I think, like, the wife had a short string, and then, like, the, the husband had a long string, and they, like, tried to off each other together. Yeah. And, and she died, died, and he yeah. survived, and I think he, got, like, got paralyzed or something. Yeah. Or almost did. Yeah. Yeah. That's scary to think about. But they didn't, like, want to live without each other, and then... Yeah. That's so sad. Wow. Ooh, heavy stuff. Mm-hmm. Um... But anyway, so those, I think those are kind of like really the main characters and their stories kind of all like intertwined together. Jack actually, or Javier actually dies in combat. So because they trade strings, that's actually how he dies, like fighting for his country. Um, They were pissed. (laughs) Yeah. Did did Javier, wait, okay, Javier is the one who died. Mm -hmm. Did Jack have repercussions for switching with him? What do you mean? Because like. If he if he was supposed to have a, if Javier was supposed to have a long string, but he died in combat, so no, he had a short string. I know, but he told the army that he had a long string, right? But he died in combat, yeah. So like, obviously, he like switched with someone. So I wonder if they like looked into that to see who he like switched with. Yeah, I mean, Jack like admitted to it or whatever. 
Oh, okay. Um, but that's like what Javier wanted. And like by that point, like he knew the day he was going to die. And he, so he was out there like, like I'm going to, you know, use it for good. Yeah. They use it like saving people. So. It's so sad. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so then I guess one other thing I'll mention to you. So you didn't finish the book. So like Amy and Ben are like writing letters to each other. And eventually like they meet. And they start to like develop a relationship and they <clears throat> like fast forward, they get married. Like Amy knows that Ben has like 10 years to go or whatever and she's never open to her box <clears throat> and they end up having like children together and Aww. and they both pass in the same car accident. <gasps> so she like never knew when she was going to pass and they died together. Wow. What yeah. is the coincidence of that? I know. Yeah. So like. So people under 22 don't get their boxes. I wonder if they get their boxes once they reach 22 because everyone's boxes got they delivered do. at the same time. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Once you, like your birthday, like the next morning it's there. So can you, cause like obviously very unfortunately there's kids that like get cancer and stuff. Can you die before then and just not know? I think so. Okay. Yeah. I don't think you like get a box earlier cause you're like, you know, going to die as a child. Like I was just, Yeah. That's, like that's interesting though. I guess I didn't think about that. Another thing I thought of too was just like how I mean, obviously this isn't realistic, mm-hmm. but like I was just thinking about it realistically, like if it were to happen. And I was like, okay, so if there's like a plane crash, mm-hmm. usually there's no survivors in that. Like so like it's pretty detri- detrimental, yeah. Yeah. So then the chances that everyone on that plane our short stringers are also very, very slim. So then I'm like thinking like, okay, so if there was a plane crash, usually there's no survivors, Mm -hmm. but there has to be long strings and short strings on there. I was just like thinking like how that would work. Cause it wouldn't. Not necessarily because that's fate that all those people are going to pass. I mean, this is like sad to talk about. So you think it'd be fate that they're all short stringers. They all would be because that's what's supposed to happen. But there's so many people on a plane. <laughs> well, I think it's like, it's not so much this string as it is what fate. fate. So yeah. fate is like these. this plane's going to go down. So just by chance, all of those people would be short stringers. I mean, I don't know how often plane crashes ha- happen in a year around the world. Yeah, not, not many. You're like safer in a car. Or no, sorry, you're safer in a plane than you're in a car. Okay. Just with, like, how more car accidents happen than plane crashes. Yeah. I don't... I was just, like, thinking, like, weird stuff like that. Oh, my like, God, though. Yeah. That's... Like, mass, like, shootings or, like, just, you know, like, just yeah. stuff that... Where there's so many people together. Yeah. Or, like, a bombing. Like, not... Trigger warning, 9-11. But, like, for example, like, if something like 9-11 happened again, mm-hmm. like, the chances that all those people were short stringers in that one building... You know, they would be though, because that's like, <sighs> it's just like, fate, right? <laughs> yeah, it's just that's like where my mind was at, like trying to like process that. I mean, when they're able to like pin down like about you know the day you're gonna die or whatever, like I wouldn't get on an airplane, but it doesn't really matter because you're still gonna die. Like fate will find other ways to, well, if make it happen. In the beginning, so like where I stopped, they didn't know how long you would have. I wouldn't get on a plane then, but like. Once they figure it out, like, down to the day, Mm -hmm. then you're fine to get on a plane. Because it can't happen sooner than the day that... No, but I mean, like, if it was the day you were going to die and you were getting on a plane, you're like, um, yeah. I would try to find the easiest way out. I'd stay home and then hopefully, like, I don't know, something... You could choke on a grape or something. Yeah, you know, like, something, like, that's not going to be painful. Yeah. (laughs) would happen. You don't want to suffer. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't want to do anything where, like, I would know I would suffer. Yeah. God, that would be so hard. Oh, my God. This is, like, really sad. Well, anyway. Um, there's plenty to talk about with this book, though. I mean, I think... Mm-hmm. So you DNF'd this book. You you didn't really care about... It was more like the storylines of the people that we were kind of, like, not yeah, vibing Yeah, it was with. just... Well, it was just boring writing to me. Mm-hmm. I think, like, it could have... Maybe like if a no offense to this author, I think this was the debut book for her, right? Yep. 
So I mean, like, I, no offense to this author. I just didn't like the writing style. That's my yeah. personal preference. But like, maybe like if a different author tried it, like the same concept, but just like executed it differently and like made it more interesting to read. Yeah. I don't know. I think the writing style was just boring for me. Yeah. And like, I totally get where you're coming from because that was like, so I loved this book, but that was like my criticism towards it where it wasn't a five for me because like I thought it was really thought provoking. But again, like you said, like just the writing style or just the storylines of all these characters, it was just kind of like, I don't know if I really care. (laughs) Yeah. If I could compare it to anything, this is exactly how I felt reading it. But if you remember like reading textbooks in school that's how I like felt reading this like it was like like you you know like in school yeah like when you have to keep rereading stuff because like your mind is just drifting Mm -hmm. that's like how it was for me oh okay so and I know like I I knew it wasn't just like an off weekend for me because like yeah I just finished or why read three books in the guild series and I like cruised through those like in two days all of them yeah but like so, like, I know it just, like, it wasn't, like, an off weekend for me to read it. It just, like, literally could not. It was just the writing style. I couldn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess, like, I didn't have trouble paying attention, but I was just, like, a little bit bored at times. Yeah. Or there were some people's storylines that I liked more than others. Like, I liked Nina, Mora, Ben, Amy, but then, like, some of the other people's, like, ugh, their chapter again, you know? Mm-hmm. So. It's funny because usually we, like, love the same books. For the most part. Yeah, for the most part we do. Yeah. Um, I, I guess I'm like shocked that you DNF'd it. I didn't think it would go to that length. <laughs> um I've never DNF'd like a book before where I like like I've yeah. like put books down where like I still planned on reading them later. Like I didn't just DNF it. Yeah. But like this is the first book where I'm like, yeah, I'm not reading that. This anymore. isn't like a book you DNF, so I'm just like, wow. But again, like you said, sometimes you get in like a certain mindset too, where you're like, I'm really into Play to Prisoner series and this book is not a Play to Prisoner series and it's not giving me what I need and what I want. So it's yeah. like, I'm going to put it down. You know, I totally get that. Like where you pick up a, like right now, for example, I'm reading a book. It's pretty good. But like, I know that I like next up for me is Glint in the Play to Prisoner series and I'm mm-hmm. super excited to read it. So the other I'm one is kind of like... It's, like, good, but I'm just, like, oh, but it's not glint, like, yeah. you know? So I think definitely, like, where you're at with other books mm-hmm. or if you've, like, just read a really, really good book, like, other ones, like, suffer a little bit. Yeah, I get that. I can see that. I mean, that could be part of it, too, but I, w- I didn't go into this, like, not wanting to read it. Like, yeah. from you, what you've told me, like, it sounded very interesting. Yeah. And I did want to read it. Mm-hmm. So, like... It's hard to say if it was like that or not Yeah, for me, just because like I did go into it wanting to read it and wanting to like it. I didn't go in with like a negative mindset. Yeah. Um, no. Yeah. We like talked about it last week and even David was like, should I read it? He, w- I feel like he would probably like it because he likes reading like, no offense, like I like some nonfiction books, but he likes reading like the boring financial books and like <laughs> autobiographies of like financial advisors and like I don't know like, oh god I, I just don't like those kind of books but like, yeah it gave me that vibe not anything like financial wise but just the vibe of what I think the writing styles would be like in okay. those books <laughs> all right so he might actually like it I don't know he might never know he did Maybe actually I should leave it here he like randomly I'm like because I kept like putting it down I'm like god I cannot read this anymore and mm-hmm. he he like would pick it up and like read a random page he's like yeah, this is boring. <laughs> oh, okay. So I don't know, I guess. All right. But all right, Poyard family. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Um All yeah. right. Well, I think we kind of talked about like the main characters, summarized like really what this book is about. Let's like get into like the very deep like deep stuff <laughs> of this book. So um I think like the big question is, would you open it? Would you open the box? Oh, that's so hard because like we were kind of talking about this earlier. Like I would have anxiety knowing, Mm -hmm. but then like not knowing, I don't know like which would be more detrimental for me. Yeah. Anxiety wise, like if it, if I would be more anxious, like not opening it 
and then just not knowing, but then constantly wondering. Yeah. And then like, I feel like if I didn't open it, I would, anything I did, I would constantly be like, is this when I'm going to die? Is this? Yeah. But then like, if it, if the boxes are based on fate, it's going to happen either way. Yeah. You know? Um, but then knowing, I guess like you have the chance to like plan out your life and how you want to live it instead of like, for example, if I was still in nursing, I am not in nursing anymore. And like, but if I was, mm -hmm. I didn't like that job. I mean, I, like if I opened it and I knew I was only going to have like a couple of years left to live, I mm -hmm. would not be wasting that time doing something I didn't like or I wasn't like passionate about anymore. Yeah. Or that I was miserable in. So it, I think I would open it mm -hmm. just because of that. Cause I wouldn't want to live like my, the last moments of my life, like doing something I like hated. Yeah. No offense to nurses. <laughs> no, it's just, <laughs> it's hard work. But, I mean, you're doing more of like what you love now. So yeah, exactly. But th that's just like an example. Like if, right. so I probably would, I think, I think it would be more detrimental to me to not open it. Cause I'm just like, I'm, I feel like I'm such a type A person to an extent where like, I need to like have a plan. I need to like know what's going on. So mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> what about you? <laughs> I don't think I would open it because, well, I, I do see like where you're coming from where you're like, I want to like plan out my life and like have, you know, a quality life with the time I have left. But mm -hmm. I'm just so like anxious to the point where like, I'm actually like kind of a hypochondriac. And so I, I don't too. know if I would be able to live knowing like I mean obviously you live to the length of your string but I don't think I'd be able to live like a quality life knowing like if my life was gonna end in the near future like yeah I just don't know if I would mentally be stable <laughs> do you think you would constantly be wondering though like if like anything you did like you went to the grocery store like do you think like this could be the time I die I don't know because... knowing that everyone knows like when their life is gonna end that you have that knowledge yeah I guess I think I would just try to remind myself that like prior to the strings being given to people and like we didn't know. Mm -hmm. And so I would like to continue to live my life the way it was supposed to be before the strings came out. So like, yeah, yeah, it would loom over me. I'm sure I would probably think about it every day like, oh, because I would totally take that box and shove it up in our like our creepy, dirty little attic in our house because I've never been up there before and I don't plan on going up there. So I'd probably just like take it and chuck it up there. But I don't know. There's kind of like two parts to this. So like I would be freaking out about my fate, but then also Nick's fate. Yeah. Like I, I think I would want to be on the same page as to like whether or not we were going to look in our boxes because not only would I freak out about myself, but I would be freaking out about his lifespan too because I don't want to lose him. You I'd know, be like freaking out about everyone in yeah. yeah. So it's like I would kind of want to approach it together yeah. the same way. I agree with that. I would hope that David would want to look, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't force him to look. Yeah. I wonder if he'd let me look and just not say anything. Oh my God. There's no way you'd be able to like live with that knowledge and not like react true, a certain way. True. True. Very true. Like he would be like paying attention because obviously if you saw it was long, you'd be like screaming and so happy. And then if you like just didn't react, he'd be like, oh yeah. My, <laughs> my short stringer, aren't I? I would hope his would be longer than mine. <laughs> and not mine longer than his you know yeah Aww. but so there's like another aspect to this too is like not everyone believes in fate do you believe in fate um like things are supposed to happen a certain way mm -hmm. I think so yeah I don't know like what I believe so like I kind of do but then I kind of don't so like I guess my thought process is like how you said like it's gonna happen either way it's like it's fate but then like if the boxes didn't come out would it still happen that way like if the boxes weren't a thing like could you like prevent your death you know mm -hmm. so I think it, I guess I see it in a fate way fate where I'm always like, there yeah like, where I'm just kind of like well you even if you don't have the box that's still you're still gonna die that day like mm -hmm. yeah well, I see, so. like, I see that, like, with everyone getting the box, but, like, if the boxes didn't exist. Yeah. Like, I wonder, like, does fate still play a role? Or, like, 
is there a chance you could like prevent that? Like, I don't know. It's just if you believe in fate or not. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. There's, there's so many different ways to yeah. look at it, honestly. Mm-hmm. It's just making my head go. <laughs> <laughs> you could, <laughs> you could get yourself down a very deep rabbit hole with this. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. It's so interesting though. Um, so kind of, I guess, branching off of that, like if you opened your box, would you then tell other people? I guess there's two scenarios or rather three, right? Like you got a short string, you got a mediocre string or you got a long string. Like, are you telling people? I think if I had a long string, I would tell my family and close friends. Yeah. If I had a short string, I don't know if like, I mean, I would be in it with my spouse with David. Yeah. Either way. Mm -hmm. But like, I don't know if I could, like if I had a short string, like, I don't know if I could. And I was like destined to die before my parents. I don't know if I'd have the heart to tell my parents, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but then like, I don't want them to like hate me for like not telling them. And then I passed away. So, I mean, that's hard. I don't know. I guess like it, it all depends on the scenario. I don't know if I would. Yeah. That's so difficult. Mm -hmm. I think some people I would tell them and some I wouldn't. What about you? Well, so I still stand with like, I wouldn't open the box, but if I did open the box, like if I had a short string, I don't think I would tell people other than like the people I'm closest to just Mm -hmm. because I wouldn't want to go about my life like having people pity me all the time. It's like, I already have to live with that knowledge. Yeah, I don't need people to like look at me a certain way to just make it worse. Like I'd tell, obviously Nick, I would tell like my parents, my sister, yeah, her husband, you, like whatever. But like, I just, if I didn't have to tell work, because again, there's that whole part to it too, where like the government wants everybody to, to, you know, disclose like how long their string is. If I didn't have to do that, I probably wouldn't. Were they forcing people to open the box and disclose that? Yeah, Towards for, like, end. certain things. Okay. But like, not certain for jobs. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's pretty much, like, the way – so I read this book a couple months ago. But the way I'm remembering it, like, it was pretty much public knowledge, like, how long everybody's string was. Wow. Because it just came out some way, shape, or form. Requ- required or not. It was just, like, a thing. Yeah. Um, medium or long – Medium's kind of a hard one because it's like, how medium is it, right? Like, if it's like 10 years, it's kind of like, oh, that's a little short. Mm -hmm. But if it's more like 20, you know, then it's like, okay, you're gonna, you're gonna pass like middle age, right? Like, Mm -hmm. but, and then long, obviously, I would have no problem telling people because like all is well. But like, because like in the part that I did read of the book, um, Nina was like at work and like, Everyone at work was, like, pitying the short stringers and stuff. Yeah. Like, like you said, like, I wouldn't want to, like, be pitied. Yeah. Or, it's like, like be, It's already you know. bad enough that you have the knowledge that you're not going to make it. Like, exactly. You don't need other people to be making it so much harder for you. hmm Yeah. So, branching off of that more, would you have children if you knew that either you or Nick had a short string? Yeah, that's a tough one. Because, like... Also, um, Ben and Amy, like, go through that, like, mm-hmm. in the book. Um, How old were their kids, do they say? I think I remember them being maybe, like, between the ages of 5 and 10. Mm-hmm. So they were, like, younger, but not super young, if I'm remembering correctly. But anyway, um, <coughs> it would obviously have to be a conversation that, like, Nick and I would have together. Like, if one of us had a short string and one had a long string, like, does the long stringer want to raise a children like raise children on their own for a part of the time like it I think it just would depend on the scenario like yeah um because again like if you're going to be left with the children like do you want to go through that do you want your children to go through that like I think it's just like a case-by-case basis where if both of us had really short strings probably not I mean because then we wouldn't want our children to be parentless and I would maybe rather if we both had under five years, like to just travel the world, you know, like yeah. that kind of thing. So I think it kind of depends, but. And then you miss out on that life aspect of like having a kid. Like if you've always wanted a child, mm-hmm. so you miss out on that though. So I know. 
But that's selfish, I guess, in my opinion. Yeah. To if you're both short stringers and Yeah. I think I would definitely be thinking about what what would it be like for our child? What would it be like for the parent left behind? You mm-hmm. know? Yeah. What about you? I feel like that's kind of a sick question to ask me right now because I'm pregnant. I know. Yeah. <laughs> if I wasn't pregnant. <laughs> Um, hypothetically, if this were to happen and I was not currently pregnant, yeah, I, I would obviously have to talk to my partner about this. Like you said, um, because like, I don't want to deny that life event from my partner. Mm -hmm. If I were, I mean, if they were to remarry or whatever they could, but, um, I don't think I would Mm -hmm. if one of us had a short string, even if like David were the one to have a short string and I were the one to have a long string. I don't think I could just because like I know losing a parent is so hard for children Mm -hmm. and like I don't know if like I'd want them to go through that. Yeah. But then at the same time, like thinking about it, like if and this would be the same concept to be applied to in David's shoes too, like, I mean, I don't know if you'd think the same way, but like, I would feel horrible. Like if David had a short string and I had a long string, like I'd want some piece of him in the world. Mm-hmm. So I would personally like want a child to like have that remembrance of him. That's true. But like at the same time, I don't want to do that to the child. Yeah. So it's, that's so hard. I know. I feel like we can speculate all day long and I feel like we both have well thought out answers to that question, but it's like, I feel like it's like one of those things, like, unless you're really in the situation, yeah. like, what do you do, you know? Yeah. Are you, like, it's one so of those tough. people that, like, plan things? Like, oh, this is so weird. But, like, I always think, like, sometimes, like, oh, if there was, like, a zombie apocalypse, like, what would I do? Like, I need to have a plan. Like, you know, like. Yeah, I'm a planner for sure. Yeah. So, like, I, will like, think about these, like, major disasters or, like, events that could take place. And then, yeah. like, I try to have a plan. So, like. If it ever were to happen, which I believe a zombie apocalypse could happen sometime because like, yeah, all it takes is like rabies to get like, oh, you know, yeah, to like mutate. (laughs) Okay. But like, it's like, I always just like plan for it. Um, You're making me like want to go dig a hole in my backyard and like make a bunker. (laughs) I say, (laughs) I like think about like, how am I like, I can't afford to have a food supply right now. Like, how am I going to get all we got is baby food around here. <laughs> yeah. Or like, I'll think about like, okay, I already have a fence built, but like, is that going to like, like is block away the enough? zombies or like, you know, I, yeah. No, you want to hear something like really freaking sad. <laughs> so I don't think that hard about like really out there scenarios. Like I just, I just don't go down those rabbit holes, but yeah. like the first place that my mind goes when I think about that kind of thing is like, what am I going to do with Toby? <laughs> <laughs> how am i gonna keep my dog away from the zombie yes i have thought about he just shit is like so that friendly i know but then they they like can't understand you so they bark and then the zombies come and like yeah so that that's so true yeah i've thought about like situations like that too and like i as sick as this is and like how common it is right now like trigger mm-hmm. warning mass shootings but like i always think about like if i were in a mass shooting like mm-hmm for example, if I, like, were to walk in the Mall of America, like, I, like, always am, like, looking for, like, okay, where would I hide? Like, what would I do? Like, okay, like, just, like, the, like, always having a plan. Um, wow. That must be very, <laughs> have, like, like stressful in your head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, well, like, like, I get it, though. I do, like, have those moments, well, again, at the Mall of America, because it has happened there yeah, before, exactly. but it's, like, I do think about it. Where I'm, like, oh, my God, what if it happened right now? Yeah. I've thought about that, like, at the state fair, too. Like, just in, like, big... Because, yeah, something... Well, that was, like, when all the riots and stuff were, like... Hap- was it? No. That was... No, they didn't have the state fair that year. Something happened last year around the state fair. I think there was a shooting or something. Or something happened. fired a gun or something. Yeah. Yeah. And it was actually, like, the night. Yeah, Because we yeah. were there... I don't know if I was there with you. I might have been there with my parents, but we were there that day. And then that night there was like a stabbing or a shooting or something. Oh my God. Yeah. It makes you just like not want to leave your house. Yeah. Right. I know this world's sick now. Yeah. It's so scary. But even like last night I woke up. So like we close, well, usually we close our door at night, but right now we like put a fan in front of the door because, so the dogs can't get out of our room because Brooklyn like will bark at everything. Mm -hmm. 
And Brooklyn like snuck past the fan and she let out. I thought I was dreaming it, but I wasn't. And she let out just two singular barks. I woke up to it and I was like, oh my God, like did someone break into our house? And I like woke David up. I'm like, Brooklyn barked. Mm -hmm. Like some, like something's wrong. And she was upstairs at the top of the stairs when she barked. So then like in my head, I was like constantly thinking like, okay, if there's a, if there's someone in our house, like I have to have a plan. Like we have nothing in here to like, oh my <laughs> like gosh. I was up for like two hours. <laughs> like, wow. I, it's awful. I hate, I hate it. I oh. cannot escape it. <laughs> Ooh, I think yeah. it's just like the world we live in now is like turned my mind into this. Like, yeah. Sorry guys. It, it's, that's very <laughs> depressing, <laughs> but <laughs> we've lost half of our yeah. listeners now. <laughs> you have a glimpse into my head. <laughs> Sick. Wow. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry that you go through that on a daily basis. Um, it could be like right now, just like a pregnancy thing too. Yeah. I mean, you're kind of like a mother hen trying yeah. to like, yeah, no, yeah. I, I, and your, your emotions are more like heightened and stuff. So you're just probably like your brain's just running a million miles a minute. Yeah. The apocalypse thing has always happened for me, but like lately I feel like it's just been worse. Yeah. <laughs> I can't say that I think about that too often, but definitely like watching a zombie movie, I'm like, I probably wouldn't make it very long. <laughs> I feel like I would make it pretty long. <laughs> I don't well, know. I just feel like I'd do something really stupid. Yeah. I don't know. I've seen like I've all of The Walking Dead. I love zombie movies. Mm -hmm. So like I've seen like all of The Walking Dead. Like it depends if the zombies are like in The Walking Dead or if they're like in World War Z. That's a huge difference. <laughs> If they're in World War Z, there's no way I'm surviving. Oh, yeah. They're, like, on steroids. They, like, are fast. If <laughs> yeah. they're slow, I'm going to be fine. Yeah, Walking Dead is If they're easy, fast, but... I'm probably not going to be fine. Yeah. Um, but it's not just, like, the zombie. <laughs> this turned into a zombie talk, but it's not at that point, it's, like, <laughs> not just the zombies. It's the people. But that hap doesn't that kind of happen in the book where, like, people are kind of, like, going crazy? Like, there's more mass shootings. Yeah. It's, it's like, kind of how society, like, reacts to it. To, like, major... I mean, you could kind of call this like a major disaster like in a way yeah. like like instead of like COVID or or whatever which I guess we could kind of talk about that too how like a lot of people have compared like the underlying message of this book to COVID which mm -hmm. like she started writing it like I think right before COVID hit so I don't know if the, the author was necessarily going into it thinking like this is vax vaccine versus anti-vaxxers like I, I don't think that was maybe necessarily her message, but you could argue that that's kind of part of it. Like yeah. the government, you know, forcing people to do certain things or like the discrimination stuff of like the short stringers. Like you mm -hmm. could definitely compare that to like minorities, women, et cetera, like in the world, like yeah. just being treated differently because of something that they can't control. Mm -hmm. I brought this up with you earlier. Um, this was like something I just ended on with the book before I DNF'd it was they were trying to correlate um, people of color and different races to if they're a short stringer or not. So like I know, for example, like just an example, but the maternal mortality rate in the U.S. is higher in black women and in Hispanic women mm -hmm. than it is in white women. So they were trying to correlate if black people or Hispanic people or just any people of other races that could have like lower access to healthcare mm -hmm. um, would be short, short stringers because they didn't have that access to healthcare because they're in the minority group. And, right. you know, like there is like that gap. Yeah. And, they just, they just don't have as many resources in their communities and stuff. And yeah. so that correlates with the mortality rate, which that yeah. makes sense. And that's very real. Sorry you know. if I'm not like explaining that correctly. No, no, I, I, thought, <laughs> but, I thought you did. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's definitely like, you know, she could be hinting to a lot of that stuff too. Mm -hmm. Like just this, you know, the string thing might not be real, but like it, our communities and like how certain people have better opportunities than others, like yeah. that is very real. Mm -hmm. So yeah, no, it's it's very interesting, very thought provoking. Yeah, I've said that like ten times. It's now, very political. Like, it, yeah, yeah. Wow, <laughs> oh my God, we talked about all kinds of things with this book. Yeah. So I guess like one last question: If you had the opportunity to know how you're gonna die, not just like know when you're gonna die, 
but how you're going to die, would you want to know? Do I know how and when or just how? Let's just go with how. Uh, Not when. No. Because I guess it. then you'd still live in fear because then you don't even know what's going to happen. Because like if you find out, what if the how, for example, is car accident? Yeah. Maybe. I, I don't know. Could you prevent it then if you never got in a car ever again? Like, probably not. You could get hit by a car. Right. So it's like, then you just live in fear of cars your entire life. Like, whereas, like, if you found out, like, you die of old age, then, okay, great. Like, you're going to live your life and and do all things. And, you know, that's that's an exciting answer. But if you get an answer like a a natural disaster or whatever, like, you're just going to constantly, like, be afraid of it. Mm Mm-hmm. So I don't know if I'd want to live like that. I feel like that's still like that's the same concept as like knowing when you're going to die too. Like, yeah, I guess the when though is like if you know you have like 10 years to live Mm -hmm. those first 10 years, like you can live pretty fear free of like car accidents, getting on a plane. Yeah. But then like the day that you are supposed to die, you're like wondering anything you do, like, is this it? <laughs> like, yeah. is this my last second on this earth? I think I would almost would rather want I would rather know when rather than how. Because then at least like you don't have to worry about it leading up to that moment until, yeah. until the day of you're panicking. But then it's like, you know, the how and it's like a very like not obvious of when you could just be constantly freaked out all the time. Mm-hmm. True. How do you, what, what do you think? Would you want to know how? I don't think so. I think I'd want to know when over how. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would constantly be living in fear, in fear of like, if it were like a or car What if it's like or choking or something? You're going to fucking eat again. Yeah, like, I'd get like a G2. <laughs> Yeah, but like, oh, I guess I'm going to have smoothies the rest of my life. Like, yeah. And then you just choke on that because <laughs> you're going to die from choking. <laughs> You'll get like a G2 put on, put in and then it's like you choke on your spit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like Drink, drinking water and you like choke on water. Yeah. Can, is that a thing? I don't know. But yeah. Anyway. Oh, I always choke on water. I choke on my own spit. It's yeah. embarrassing. Oh, I have to. <laughs> <laughs> if people are like, oh Thank my God, are you okay? Has. I'm like, I'm fine. And you're like not even eating. Yeah. <laughs> Just randomly, like, jumping over here. Ugh. Jeez. Wow. Okay. Well, this is interesting. Yeah, we did go down a rabbit hole this I time. I have a feeling. That's why when you were like, I DNF this book, like, is that going to be a problem? I was like, nah. Like I said, though, I liked the concept. Yeah. But. Okay. Yeah. Just execution. <laughs> yeah. No, and that's fair. Mm-hmm. Um, What would you rate this? The, what would you rate the first 80 pages of this book? <laughs> Like a one. <laughs> oh my god, our first one, and it was this book. I'm sorry. I yeah, I don't know. I mean, I feel like I have to give it a one just because I had to DNF it. Yeah. But like what I did read, I didn't enjoy. Yeah. So like, <laughs> I don't know. I just felt like again, no offense to the author, but like I just felt like it could have been executed better. Like it could be it could have been written better, more interesting. Like, for example, tender is the flesh. Crazy concept. Yes. Very thought. And it was executed well. Yes. <laughs> it it was, was very hard it was, to read. It was thought provoking. It, yep. it was hard to read, but it kept your attention and yep. it was interesting. It's if like it would have been done in a way like that. look away. Exactly. No matter how morbid it was. Yeah. If it, if it would have been done like that, I think I would have liked it better. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe that author should like redesign this concept and like write about it you know (laughs) yeah because they're both like dystopian yeah they're both what ifs Mm -hmm. right yeah that's very true yeah so i'm sorry guys you probably if you've read this book i'm sure you've liked it i'm i'm (laughs) the minority here but i don't know i mean i think it had like a four average or 3.8 or something on goodreads Mm -hmm. i i looked at the one stars a lot of people actually did dnf it oh wow okay but um yeah, I mean, like anyone, everyone has different tastes. So if you loved it, you loved it. Yeah. If you hated it, hated it. Yeah. That's okay. Mm-hmm. It's not for everyone. Yeah. Just like any other book. What about you? I give it a four out of five. Um, I did like it. I thought it was thought provoking. Um, I didn't have any trouble getting through it. I do see where you're coming from with like 
the kind of boring storylines where, again, I think I said this earlier, but I was like, there are certain people that I was just like, oh my God, I just need to get through this chapter. Like, I don't care. Like, it mm-hmm. just was slow. Were you happy the chapters were short? Yeah. Yep. That kind of helps too. Yeah. Chapters. Yep. Yeah. Um, also, my other like criticism with it, and I don't know if it's necessarily like she did anything, the author did anything wrong, but it, so what I wanted when I picked this book was that I was more interested in the logistics of the boxes. Mm-hmm. Like, so when I read like the premise of the book before starting it, I was like, oh, is it going to be aliens? Is it going to be God? Is it going to be the government? Like who's putting these boxes there? Right. Cause yeah. I was like, how does that work? Did it, did it ever say? No. Okay. And so, and I was talking about this book with two of my work friends that also read it and they were like, well, Emily, that's not the point. Like, and I was like, I know that that's not the point. Like it was yeah. about the stories of these people and how they handled this knowledge, but it's like, you still want to know. I, as a reader, like I have to know, like, was I it aliens? Same, I thought the same thing too. I'm like, how did these boxes come about? Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I'm not, it's not a criticism necessarily. Cause I don't think that that's what the story was about, but that's what I wanted. I wanted yeah. like a little bit more sci-fi out of it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, how how are none of these people like how are none of these 20 20 year old year olds perching themselves outside of their doorstep at midnight on their birthday like waiting to see how the box shows up i'm sure they like fall asleep and then it's there right yeah. like that's maybe it was santa claus oh my god you can make it around the world <laughs> yeah one night <laughs> right yeah i guess i was hoping when there, there was all these different storylines that like one of the people that we were gonna follow was like an fbi agent or somebody like looking into this like mm-hmm. how was there nobody like see you rewrite it that would have been more interesting <laughs> i know i'm like damn like aliens like let's go like yeah. i was like excited. aliens would have been cool yeah 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 so anyway i didn't necessarily dock a point for it it was just more a little disappointed Mm-hmm. but I still I liked it um it's gonna be one of those books that I think about for a long time because the you know just really makes you think about your life and the quality of life and yeah yeah so anyway yeah <laughs> just needed an alien or two <laughs> cool well you've been grinding through the plated prisoner series How's that going? Are you reading? I love it. Else? Yeah. Uh, I'm obsessed. I just got the fourth one in the mail today, so I'm probably going to start that tonight. Ooh. I Glow? I, I will start it tonight, let's be honest. But yeah, I think it, yeah, it's glow. It's guild, glint. Gleam. Gleam, glow. glow. Gold. It's so hard that, like, I always mix up the orders of them. Yeah. They all. Well, literally in our episode last week, I was like, which book are you reading again? Mm-hmm. The can- third one ended on such a cliffhanger, too, for me. Oh. So, like... I'm like really excited to see. I like kind of looked ahead online to see. Really? Like, not nothing big, but just yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Not to like I didn't give like really anything away. It's just mm-hmm. something I had to know. I'm not gonna say because you haven't read it yet. But yeah, I haven't even started the second one. I'm. I need to do that. I'm really excited. For we're you talking to start about it. that next week. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I'm itching to to started to you'll fly through it are you it's kindle right you have mm-hmm. it yeah yeah and it went really fast the first one went really fast where mm-hmm. i was like the little percentage on my screen i was like oh shit i think the third one is the longest i haven't seen the fourth one yet but the third one so far is the longest okay just get bigger and bigger mm-hmm. yeah is there anything else that you've read recently that you want to talk about i just finished legends and lattes which was like a book that has been on our like book club list for a while um we kind of like pushed it off summer just gets really busy so um i know we'll talk about that one at some point this month but i think we're gonna do a novella on it right or are we yeah you and i should do a novella on it if if you're still up for reading it um (laughs) see if i get there i've missed (laughs) like book club since like january or no since like march yeah february maybe you got a lot going on yeah it's okay oops <laughs> no i mean i don't know you weren't feeling good for the longest time and it's short though like i can do it yeah it was pretty quick i did like it um i think i gave it a four out of five on goodreads it you have to go into it knowing what you're getting into it's mm-hmm. not really like a big plot it's just it's meant to just be like cozy and happy and feel good like 
you're not getting this grand adventure. Even It's a fantasy book. Like the characters are all fantasy beings, but um, it's really just about how this one, like the main character is an orc and she just like really wants to like open a coffee shop. And it's really the book is just following her and how she does it, starting from the yeah. ground up essentially. Um, and then she gets like employees and building friendships with them and how they like slowly develop like different coffee drinks and bakery goods. It's cute. It is cute. And like the characters are so cute, but it's like, it's not like this big thing. It's not a big story. Like it's just like, if you're in the mood for- It's like a cozy read. Yeah. If you just want something like kind of happy and not like crazy, then I think, but the key is that you have to like fantasy. Because if you're just looking for something light, but you don't like fantasy, I don't think you're going to like this book. Okay. So there is one girl in our book club that doesn't like fantasy. I wonder if she, I want to know what she thinks about it. Yeah. I'm curious. Yeah. This is kind of out of her her typical list of books. So I don't know. But I mean, just with that being such a big piece of it, I feel like you kind of have to like fantasy to like be able to get through this book. Okay. Well, I like fantasy, so we'll see. <laughs> yeah. I think... I think you could like it. You just have to be like in the mood for it, right? Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Maybe after I read, uh, what is it? Glow? Glow. Yeah. I'll read that one. Mm-hmm. While well, you suffer and wait for gold in December. Yeah. That's going to be a long wait. I have to have a baby before then. That's like the craziest thing. Yeah. Before that book comes out, I need to have a baby. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> that's going to come fast. Yeah. I don't know. It's I'm scary excited. to think about. I'm so terrified. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, that's our show. We covered a lot, but <laughs> yeah, we did. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, we love hearing from you guys, whether you're commenting on our YouTube episodes, liking um, subscribing to our YouTube channel if you like hearing from us every week. Hopefully you made it to the end here. Yeah, we hopefully didn't you didn't log off at zombies. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we're on YouTube. We're also on pretty much every major streaming podcast platform. So you can find us there. Subscribe. Give us a five-star review if you enjoyed this episode. Um, we are also on TikTok and Instagram as The Literary Lounge MN. We um, post our drinks every week. We also like post kind of summaries every month of like the books that we recapped and again sharing like our reviews on stuff and we post pictures and so um we love kind of the little community that we've started there so feel free to follow us on instagram if you want to keep up with us yeah you say hi chat with you. <laughs> yeah we want to know what you guys are reading because we're big readers and you know the tbr list only gets bigger as life goes on so help us out and shoot some recommendations our way so um Next week, we're talking about Glint, second book in the Plated Prisoner series, like I said. So excited to get into that. Um, But thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.